Thank you so much for joining me on this video. I'm hoping to make it like a blitz update of all my new imports, the Floralia, Rapiculus Lelius, and the Afri orchids, because it hasn't been that long, but there are some changes and I want to show you what is going on. My Floralia orchids, of course, they've been with me for quite some time and they have not been potted up yet. But here's an update based on the new imports, how to care for new imports video. I want to show you how far we've come and also what I've done now that it's getting hotter and even drier to make sure that my orchids will eventually either grow roots and be ready to be potted up or I stop the dehydration of the leaves because the ambient air is so dry. And clearly we can say, look, they're in bottles. Thank you for watching. See you next time. But maybe you would be interested to see, is there any progress on the root front? What has happened since the last time when I showed the new imports, how to take care of them video. And in front of you, you can see my Lelia Sangiloba. Um, she looks much smaller than she did when she arrived. And that is because she absorbed the back bulbs that had already had black on the bottom and they weren't gonna amount to much. So they've gone and I can finally throw this bit away now that I'm getting around to this video. I've been holding on to this because this was part of the orchid when she arrived, but the bulbs at the bottom were black, not with rot, but you know, age. And then eventually they dried off and came off relatively easy. And now you can see that the orchid itself there's another leaf being absorbed and that's okay. I'm not concerned at all. It looks scary, but it's okay. And it comes off relatively easy. So we're done with that part as well. And slowly but surely you'd think there's not much left, but the three new growths she came with when she was living and drying on a tray, dunk and dry, dunk and dry, they have really progressed. I like what I'm seeing to stop any more of this stress dehydrating from the leaves, I have every single one of them with a few exceptions, which I'll come to just now, in like, you know, a pot bottle. And then I have my hub material at the bottom and there's always water at the base in those little nooks there. And I put the orchid in there to make sure that there isn't too much dry air around the base of the orchid now. My humidity levels are at an average of 20% and dunking and drying when the new growths are like this could also be very dangerous for rot, even with dry air. I can be distracted, I can move away, I can be gone and then think of it three hours later. That's not even a good thing this time of year. So this is helping me a lot. No new roots on the new growths just yet but I'm not really in a rush to repot these, even though if I had my pots, I would be tempted to do so. The reason being, I have much better control in helping these little guys out in this setup, even if they start to grow roots, than I have if I pot them up. If there's any kind of fluctuation in the temperatures, I can manipulate how much water I want at the base, and how much humidity I can maintain in this bottle setup by putting a lid on it. This helps me so much more than if I were to pot them up. Meanwhile, the pots that I've ordered for them, they haven't even been unpacked by the nursery yet. So you know what? I'm not in a rush to pot these guys up. This is Lelia Millery. And I have to be super careful because there's one, sorry, there's one attempt of a root right there one little attempt. She looks a little bit worse for wear, but that new little growth that she came with is looking very, very nice. Yes, there's a sheath in there, but if this one is trying to bloom, I won't let it. It will be totally against anything I want to see happening here. But Millery is, has just had a new spray top up this morning. That's why she's a little bit wetter at the base. Also because I don't want anything to happen to that root. I have to be very careful also with the angle of the orchid in the pot, just so that any humidity against the side of the bottle doesn't touch my leaf. 
because that is also a dangerous thing. All of them are in bright shade in my dining room. They have airflow, but not too much. If the air gets too hot, too windy, I shut the terrace door. These are getting babied like nothing else. But in this setup, my workload is reduced exponentially. So let's get you out. This is Lelia Brade. Sorry if I'm being very, very careful, but I, you know, you have to be. Lelia Brade split into two pieces when I cleaned her up. But you can see the new growth she came with. They've matured really, really well. She's already growing another new growth while she's been with me in this setup. The roots are hydrating and the old root back here is branching. Theoretically, I could pot Brade up, but I don't want them in two separate pots. And while they're entangled, careful. I don't want them in two separate pots. So I'm waiting for this one to pick up a little bit more. Check this out. This is a new growth that has since grown while it has been in this bottle setup. And this is the old growth. When it arrived, it had matured with me and I'm just making sure that this isn't rot because if this is rot and we are in trouble and we need to sort this out, it could just be the sheath. It's the sheath, thank goodness. But you see, I need the humidity. I need to help these along. I've got to stop the dehydration through the leaves. And these are tiny little leaves. With this climate right now, that is the only way that I can recommend or keep them happy, not potted up, but hydrated and not declining. So I just poured the water out that I sprayed in this morning for them, for these pieces, because I'm not happy that the sheath is so wet. Something which I also do is remove the lower sheath so that the humidity that I need them to be in doesn't culminate into rot. So I think we got away with that one just in time. Now, I, if I were to pot this one up, if my pots ever get unpacked at the nursery, then what I will do is put a dome around them because there will come a point in time when this is already too much, too long. It needs to get potted up. These roots are precious. They're exuding a lot of energy right now. I don't want to lose that energy and then have a problem with no roots anymore and it has to start again or it will decline. When that happens, when I repot, that'll be a fantastic achievement because I've been waiting now eight weeks for those pots. Here's Lelia Brigeri and look at this trooper here. This is the growth it came with and it was itty bitty. Let me just put that away carefully. This growth was itty bitty when it arrived and it has matured and it's got a sheath in it. <laughs> this is something that I find so remarkable with some of these ridiculous lalias. I mean, you know, you can grow bare root, but trying to bloom, that's a different kettle of fish. And if it does bloom, I'm going to let it. Yeah, it's got something in the sheath. <laughs> if it does bloom, I'm going to let it because this is all one orchid. She has enough strength and then we can check out the blooms while she's in a bottle. What she's not doing at this point is giving me new roots. Got to make sure that we don't have any issues there because if this were to be mold or something, that is going to be treated with hydrogen peroxide. Anything that should come up that looks dodgy at the base gets treated immediately with a spritz of hydrogen peroxide. Here's another new growth that wants to start while the other one's still blooming. And here's a brand new growth that wasn't in place, didn't even fathom into the equation when it arrived, and it is also growing. So some of the roots are hydrating, but again, this orchid would decline very, very quickly if I were to pot her up, because I cannot maintain the loss of hydration through the leaves as, as it transpires. So looking good. Next up, I did say I wanted to make this a blitz one <laughs> and already I'm taking a lot longer than I was anticipating. 
Next one here is my teeny tiny little bloom and shiny eye. Looking a lot better than it did on arrival and a lot better than in the video that I had about how to take care of new imports. However, I don't have any new growths, but you see even this one, if I were to pot it up, that would be history for it. I don't have any sign of new roots. I'm not bothered. Look at the shine on the leaves. That is a completely different look to what it came with. It didn't come with a new growth or anything. This is how it's been with me, but it has improved very, very much. It's plumper and shinier. Also in its little setup here, and it got a little bit more water this morning. The exceptions to this setup are two. My Lilliputana, which again, very tiny little growths. The bases are super delicate. So this one gets a dunk and dry and then it just lies on the shelf to dry out. The reason it is wet now is because I had a little bit of water in that little bowl, but it has to dry out when I'm done filming. It will go straight onto the shelf and then that's it for the day. I've lost one bulb in the back and it looks like it wants to be two plants, but I'm not messing with it because this side here to my eye is not looking happy at all. You can see how shriveled that growth is. I'm hoping for some roots. This side here is looking a lot better and it's also <laughs> growing a new growth. So I can probably save this piece right here. I'm fighting for survival on this piece. But if I were to put this tiny little thing into a bottle setup, just like the others, I will lose it to rot because the bases are so, so delicate. That's why it has a humid an environment in this little bowl with a lot, a lot of airflow. Similarly here, Cardimii. Remember this little guy in his little glass? He's still in his little glass. Same thing. Now let's, I've got to be really careful here. Sorry. But uh, yeah, first get it out. Now it has absorbed a little bit in the back here. But look at the new, two new growths it came with that were sticking out of the base of the orchid at an angle not ideal for potting up or anything like that. I talked about light training in my video and how I lay them down so that they will grow towards the light and correct themselves. And look at the second new growth right here. Isn't that amazing? Boom, we've got it bolt upright. Perfect. All the little leaves have plumped up. She is looking much, much better than when she arrived and much better than she looked when it was in that video. We're waiting for roots. I thought yesterday I saw a sign somewhere. Oh no, what I saw was another new growth. <laughs> that was tiny, tiny yesterday. And I was like, rejoice, we have a root. But nope, it looks like a new growth. Well, never mind, roots will come. But you see, this one is in no shape to be potted up. I would lose it very, very quickly to the elements. And that's why it has its own little glass here. The growth will now grow upright. I do keep the tag right next to this little growth that is right up against the glass, just to protect it from any kind of humidity or water residue and to avoid it from rotting. So this tag has been very, very helpful looking a lot better than it did whenever that video came out. Now let's go to the Afri Orchids imports and give you a quick update on those. Here they are in their classy Greek yogurt cups, <laughs> tubs. Right, this is what I'm doing. They're staying in these tubs. I want to get to know them better and I have, again, much better control in the setup. So I have the Mysticidium capensis here. Look at her. Little trooper, she's growing a new leaf. Thank goodness for that because she had lost a leaf two or three days after arrival and it had yellowed at the base. So I was a bit concerned if that could be rot. She might lose this one as well, but I believe it's just a kink in the leaves. However, within a very short period of time, we've got new leaf growth. And you can see that the water is touching the base of the cork bark. 
it is a little bit now too high. It's late in the day and I want her to dry out a little bit, but still have humidity at the bottom that she can enjoy until that evaporates. This one lives indoors with me. It's a cool to cold grower. Welcome to Spain in the middle of July. Whoopee, that's not a good thing while she's acclimating in my climate. So she's indoors in the dining room with me. Lots of bright light, no sun. I love the, how the roots are really, really taking in and absorbing and going green. So now she can dry out for the rest of the day. Here's my little Brasiliensis, bicolor Brasiliensis. You can see how much water I put in there. And that is because she appears to have a little bit of a climbing habit. And her roots that are hydrating now are these in the front. Woohoo! We got a new root nub in here. Hey, didn't see that this morning. That's exciting. Please, there we go. Please focus. Good grief, not now. I said a quick video. Come on, camera. Do the honors. Anyway, there is a root nubbin coming there. These are hydrating beautifully. And the reason I still have all this old stuff on is simply because it helps me with humidity. Once I empty out the tub, du jour, that's her bit for the day. And then whatever is left in the bottom can evaporate. And uh, maybe we can pot her up at some point soon. That would be awesome. Here's Masticola, same thing. The mount touches and is submerged in the water for most of the day. And we're gonna do the same thing here now. Pour enough water out so the mount isn't in the water anymore, but there's enough water in the pot there for humidity, and that can evaporate at leisure. At least the orchid is now not touching that water anymore, and she's had her bit. I'm fertilizing these guys now. That today they had 100 parts per million of MSU fertilizer. So the seaweed part is done for now. They are being treated as if they've been in my collection for ages because the leaves have plumped up. They're showing their shine. And now they're getting normal fertilizer. Weak, but it's there. So this little vanda, this uh, Setorchis pretermisa, it is in very, very shallow water for most of the day. I do not let the cork touch because even though there's kinks in the roots, all that hydration that you see going on there, I hope you can see that. Come on camera, play ball. You're heating up on me here, right there. You see they're hydrating. So I don't need that cork to touch the water, just the roots at the bottom and they're doing their job. And my little Vanda Pumilla, it's a shame but it was to be expected. The spike is fading. It won't be with us for long. So we won't see the blooms, but I'm treating it as a wet dry cycle. Now I'm leaving a little bit of water at the base just to evaporate, same as with the others, but look at the lush color on those leaves, how she has perked up. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Yes, that is a shame. However, if it had made it, I would have been super, super surprised. My Lelia Fufuracea is not doing anything at all. I don't see anything plumped up on the pseudobulbs, but that could just be me seeing her every day. But she is not declining either, and that is important to me. This root is now hydrating, which is great. So she gets everything that the others are getting. They're all getting treated the same. But now she can sit in no water because she is not actively growing. So whatever humidity is left at the base will be plenty good for the night. So that's fine. She's had her fill. Next up is my little Trias. Is just sitting here wondering what on earth is going on. So that makes two of us. <laughs> but I can tell you that nothing is going on. I hardly ever have water in this tub. I may just dunk her at the base in water and then I put her in the tub. And as she is a warm to hot grower, she lives outside, but in full shade, no sun for this one. So there is humidity in and around her base. It is not obvious, but I will not have her sitting in water with succulent like pseudobulbs that she has. And my Ancelias here, well, some leaves have dropped. 
They are getting misted now quite regular so that the wind doesn't dehydrate them too much. And they sit always in a little bit of water at the base of the tub. If that dries out overnight, I let it go dry and then I fill them up again next day. There's always water there, even though I don't believe the roots are viable. The base is not in the water. The humidity is important to me. And I go around with my sprayer and mist all of them on a regular basis. Here's the Joe Puff Adder one. There's not much activity, but there's no decline either. I haven't even gone to cleaning them up. I want them as yet just to be humid enough around the base. These sheaths, if they're gone, I don't have a humidity supply for them. These sheaths, once I spray them, they go wet and they also provide humidity. In my dry, dry climate at the moment, anything that can help me with humidity, I'll take it. So the sheaths are staying on for now. They will come off though one day. Again, a little bit of water. And even if the roots aren't viable, I'm not messing about with who gets fertilizer or not. These are all under the same kind of care regime. A lot of wet in the morning, touching the roots. And then by early afternoon, I empty out the pots to where there's a, like a centimeter, half an inch at the base of the pot and let that evaporate and then repeat for next day. I hope this was quick enough. I wasn't trying to rush through this. I don't personally like rushed videos, but I do understand that there are a lot of orchids and a quick update in my books was of interest and I hope so for you as well. If you think that these kinds of videos can be broken down into smaller chunks and bites, let me know in the comments below because I could have just done a Floralia update, then I could have gone and done an Afri Orchids update. I don't know, you let me know how you would prefer it in future. I appreciate your feedback very, very much and your time. So thank you very much for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, please stay safe and take care. Bye.